Welcome back, this is Dave from ERC, and I just got in, this is the 1430 millimeter Eagle, the large EPP RC Eagle. Just got it in the mail today, and I want to talk about that, and just look at this. This is the box from the smaller Mini Eagle, and you can see there isn't a lot of difference in the boxes. That kind of surprised me, that the boxes were so similar in size how they crammed that extra size into this box, I don't know, but uh, let's get it out of the box and see what's in there. Okay, so what we had in the box was the main bundle with all the parts in it right here. And then we have another bag with the prop and a few more parts. Of course, the rubber bands. Then we have the spars, well, one spar and some control rods. Now on this model, the control rods appear to be carbon fiber instead of metal like the Mini Eagle. And this time I got the motor and the servo, so I got the, the plug and play kit this time with all the parts. And there's a little ESC in there, it looks kind of small, I'll show you that in a minute. And I'll get these things out of the bags and then we'll take a look at those. And what I want to do is make a comparison between this and the Mini Eagle so you can see the difference in the wing size and the fuselage and stuff like that and how it's constructed differently than the Mini Eagle. Okay, first let's take a look at the wing section and the difference in that. Of course, we know that it's 1430 versus 1200, so that's the measurement. But it actually looks a lot bigger than that when the eye catches it. So you can see here that it has ailerons already included, so you don't have to put your own ailerons on, so that's a good thing. Other than that, it's constructed about the same way with two wing pieces and two wing tip pieces. Same material and everything, just as strong as the other one. And uh, when the other one was up in the tree and I was poking the heck out of it to get it down, I was surprised that it didn't suffer any damage, so this is really good foam, very durable. Okay, so back on the bench here, again, I'm just showing the wing section here and how it compares to the original. Here's the wing tip right here. I'll put it up against that. And you can see this overlaps completely over the middle and keeps on going. And these wings do have the same little wing ornament that goes on the front like that. So the instruction manual for it looks very comprehensive, just like the first one. Lots of pictures, lots of detail. Now if we compare the fuselage to the original Eagle, here is the original one right here. This is the Mini Eagle, I should say. And you compare that fuselage to it, I'll match up the very tip here of the end, and look at the difference in size. It's just overall much bigger. Deeper and longer and everything. But uh, there's going to be a lot more room inside it too, so it's not going to be as crampy inside it. It's quite impressive compared to the other one. Although the little one, I gotta admit, is nice to fit in the car and really a lot of fun to fly. I'm excited about building this new one. Okay, now here we have the wood pieces. But I'll line the holes up to where the dowels go through for the rubber bands. That's how it'll mount. And you can see this time it goes all the way to the front. So I won't have to build up the front to make the motor stick out far enough. It's already got the motor mount where it should be. So that'll make it easier to assemble. So another good thing about this particular build is it does give you plenty of extra motor mount pieces. I count four of them right here. And I think you can use those to build up your motor mount so the motor sticks out far enough out the front. It has the same servo tray configuration. And you can see this is a lot wider than the original bird. If we go in here and look at that servo tray, and then this one actually, you can see how that goes over the outside of the bird. It's quite a bit bigger, so there's going to be more room, more width inside here. And so I think I'm... I'm really going to be able to build this one a little bit quicker than the other one because it's more well designed. Okay, moving on to the motor. 
220. So this is a 920 kV motor. And you remember I had trouble with a 980 kV on the other one that just wasn't spinning fast enough. But I had a smaller prop. This has a larger prop that comes in the package right here. And it is a 9x53, I believe. You can see it right there. I haven't got it out of the bag yet, but a 9x53. This is the little triangle for the tail section to glue the V-tail onto. And then we have some more spars, right? These are the things, you know, you put on the wing where the rubber band goes over. These flat spars. And then we have some metal hardware here. And you can see we have some substantial hardware. I think it looks better than the other one as far as it's got these mounts here so the screws won't pull through. Yeah, it's very nice. And of course, there's one of the dowels and there's the other one. So I got both dowels. Yep, looks like everything's there, including the, I think it's four rubber bands in there. I hope so. The other one had four rubber bands. All right, that's that. And now let's move on to the servos. They look just like the cheap plastic gear servos, nothing special. So I'll probably use the plastic ones on the ailerons, and I'll probably replace the rear servos with metal gear servos. That's what I did on the other one. And there's the motor mount that came with it. This one does come with a prop saver, so there's the prop saver. I did use that on the, on the other one, even though, you know, I didn't get any of these parts with the other one. It was just the foam kit. But, um, yeah, I had a prop saver and I put it on there. And you want to do that because the prop will get damaged when it hits the ground if you don't have one of these on. This allows it to just flop out of the way. So, yeah, I would recommend using that. All right, let's take a look at the ESC. It says 2 to 3S LiPo 20 amp. Doesn't look like it has any heat sink on there at all. It's just the plain board and heat shrunk. I might replace this ESC with maybe a 30 amp with the heat sink on it. Okay, finally we have the, uh, the main wing spar right here and the control rods. I'm curious to see how they're going to use the if there's any clevises or anything in here. Oh yeah, they, they were in this pack. There's the clevises. And they look like they just glue on the end of the carbon fiber rods. Kind of like the last one did, but it had metal. And of course we have the horns there. Yeah, so everything looks like it's here. As far as the uh, tail feathers go, they're the same as the other one, but bigger. You can kind of see the difference here. That's the original one. Here's the new one. So you can see they're quite a bit larger in area, as to be expected. But they are hinged, just like the other one, and they have some uh, slots here where you can put in that carbon fiber that was in the kit. So there are places for that. I think my other one, this one here, came with that carbon fiber already installed. But that's easy to do, so no problem there. And then you have your bottom bottom plate same design as the other one and the top plate which goes right here for going around the motor and then there's a little rear section right there and I think that's about it yeah so now we just have to start putting it together and I'll probably be using fabric tack once again to glue all the parts together with a little bit of CA probably on the wood so to get that down thrust and right thrust, you can add some washers onto the motor mount uh, to give it those tilts. Uh, we'll get into that when I build it. Now on my first build on this Mini Eagle, I actually added a battery tray in the bottom right here. And the battery was about three quarters of an inch or so in front of the servo tray right here. And uh, on the new one, I'll probably have to do that again, build another battery tray because there is none included. So the battery tray on the 1430 millimeter Eagle will be more forward, probably about two inches in front of the servo tray. And uh, so the battery can get up in there further. You need a lot of weight in the front on these for them to fly right. And of course the larger one, instead of using the 1500 milliamp hour battery like this, it'll be using a 2200 milliamp hour three cell. So that'll give it more weight because it is a larger plane. 
Okay, so we'll see you soon, probably for the first build video. If you want to check that out, just make sure you're subscribed and you hit that bell notification so you'll be notified when that video comes out. But this ought to be a fun build as well and an exciting bird to fly, just like the 1200 was. Oh man, what a lot more power.